his and hers video podcast. My name is Melissa. And I'm Sean. And this episode is called The Bathroom Terrorist. So what's new with you? <laughs> Not much since last week. You have nothing on the table. Not I again. have nothing on the table. I'm supposed to be doing a heel right now. <laughs> and you're not. Nope. Um. <laughs> Epic fail. We killed zombies. We did after the last time you recorded. I did pretty well. You got six. I killed six. And I said, how many did you kill? And you said? 37. <laughs> she was... A... Without those six, man. <laughs> We wouldn't have lasted much longer. Yeah. It's okay. We don't play enough. We need to practice more. Zombies are persistent. Well, you know. I just don't like it when they rip down the windows and that kind of like bolt the windows back up again. Which game were we playing again? Call of Duty 2. Black Ops? Black Ops 2. Call of Duty. And it's called the Transport? It was called Transit. Transit. With a Z. Bathroom terrorist is making noises. Um, yeah. I played a little bit more of... Something. Re <laughs> Reckoning. And I'm probably going to buy that Dungeon Hunter game. For your... For my Vita. News about PlayStation 4 this week. Probably release at E3, which is coming up. Where is it this year? I don't know. It's usually in Vegas or Boston or New York. So, not much new for me. I'll take up some of your table space. Not yet. Oh, okay. I see. I just... How's your washcloth? Oh. Maybe you could use it to pull your nose. <laughs> It's about that big. So I've been knitting on all the things. I don't have anything finished to share. Um, but I did start the Ho'aloha, which is a mystery sweater. So if you've not started Clue One and you want to be surprised, you're gonna want to skip ahead a few seconds. Um, this, Spoiler alert. This is starting on Clue Two. I'm one row in on Clue Two. And I'm using um, Madeline Tosh Erin Heritage, which is a domestic U.S. wool that was then dyed by them. And it's limited edition, and I have two sweaters worth. This is the first sweater. And this is in the Dahlia colorway, and it's bigger than I wanted. Um, my gauge is almost on, um, but the yarn I'm using is Erin. So it fits me fine. Um, it's not as fitted as some other people's sweaters that I'm seeing on Instagram and Twitter. Um, and on Ravelry, but that's okay because my stomach area still isn't where I want it to be for fitted items. So I think I want a little bit more ease than what the pattern gives because the pattern has no ease. So we'll see as we go and if it's too big. I definitely have a couple of knit worthy people that I can give it to. And this is in my Jessaloo, Stitched by Jessaloo sweater bag. And she'll be having another update soon, I think. She just got more Downton fabric in. And I'm on the third skein of yarn. So far. And I bought my buttons. I should share those. And these are from Webs. Um, they're Malia's Pottery. And Malia is the former office manager who now works there part-time so that she can focus full-time on her pottery. Because she's a... Pottis? Potter. Potter. She's a potter, um, and her website is m a l e a s p o t t e r y dot com, where you can buy them at Webs, and I think they match pretty well. I'm going to sneeze again. No, you're not. That's the worst. Uh, I also have tried on tubing, which I've had for at least a year, um, and that's from Machine Knitting to Die For. Com. Have you tried it on yet? Yeah, that's you got to try it on. Mel has you try it on as you knit it. Because ah. um, so it's called try, try it on, on tubing. Yep. 
And the pattern was given to me from my friend Amy. So thank you again, Amy, even though I've thanked you a few times. Um, and I'm having a lot of fun knitting along with everybody. On Instagram, people are posting their progress. And I'm a little bit jealous of the people who are knitting smaller sizes because they're way ahead of me. <laughs> but that's fine. Um, I'm also making progress on my Natasha sock, which is out of Fireweed Dye Works, um, who is Alaskan Nancy on Ravelry, and Sean bought me the yarn for Christmas all on his own. Uh, her Etsy shop is currently empty. She's currently on vacation. Sean purchased the yarn by messaging her. He didn't buy it from the store. It was a so, long drive. Um, <laughs> to I mean, Alaska, no. yeah. Uh, so you definitely um, might want to try that route of messaging her. If she's on vacation, I don't know if she'll reply right away, but I love it. Um, I'm going to do a short row heel, and I'm going to actually use the heel from the Free Pattern Nutkin on Ravelry um, and do that short, short row heel. I normally do uh, a afterthought heel, um, but my best friend pointed out that I always do an afterthought heel on straight This spots. is true. And that normally it's my policy to do something new and learn something new, and I've kind of gotten into a rut, so that's where I'm going with this. And this is what it looks like caked up. And it matches my bag a little bit. Um, and that is another stitch by Jess Lou Bag. <laughs> rut. And that's not a rut. This is a collection. It's a sickness. You're right. And inside are bees, which always make me happy because my name means honey bee in Latin. So there's that, and I also knit on my shipwreck shawl. Uh, if you remember, I ripped it out. Um, I hadn't knit it in about a year, so my gauge was different. And this is just in a Vera Bradley cosmetic bag with plastic coating on the inside because it has my signatures, and I don't like my signatures to poke through my Jessie bag. So I keep it in there. Um, and this is out of my own hand dyed. Uh, Sean and I occasionally dye for Keegan Lane yarns. We don't do it in the winter because there's nowhere to dry the yarn. Um, so the next time I dye will Seasonal. be probably in May. Maybe sooner if we get warm weather. Um, but there's snow this weekend. Yeah, seriously. This is... Wait, really? That's what they're forking. I didn't want to tell you. <laughs> I'm so tired of snow. It might not. I mean, it's I early. I wrong. Yeah, it's Wednesday. May have to activate activate the uh, French toast squad. <laughs> Hi alert! Buy all the bread, eggs, and milk you can. <laughs> My stomach apparently Did you wants hear French, the French toast. toast? <laughs> Your stomach's like bring it on. Last time I had bread was like two Give minutes ago. Give me French toast. <laughs> anyway, the shipwreck shawl, which is why you're here, not the French toast alert. This episode <laughs> is a hot mess. Um, <laughs> so it's color progressive. I'm on the first skein. Um, it's wrapped around the, the cake weird because I frogged it um, two weeks ago. And I'm almost done with the second repeat of the Bleeding Hearts. I tried to get through it, but I didn't by the time we recorded. So you can see the Bleeding Hearts there. I hope you can see them. And I have my beads ready to go. Um, right after this repeat is the Madeira's Lace, and then I start on the edging. So it's really not a hard pattern. It's just not something that I can do in the car, not that we've been driving anywhere lately um, as a family. Usually it's we're commuting separately to our jobs. Um, and then if the kids are up and rambunctious because they have cabin fever, that's hard to knit. In front of them. Why are you laughing? <laughs> it's just funny. What's funny? And you're just like, I can't knit on this if we're driving, if I'm, I'm breathing, if no. <laughs> the kids are away. <laughs> no, you won't. No. You can I won't? Me. No, you won't. No, not for the sake of... Are you daring not me Not for now? the sake of viewers or anything. Is he daring me? I'm not daring you. You won't. You won't. <laughs> That's like, are you asking me that I won't? No, you won't. I wasn't making fun of you. It was just <laughs> funny how, like, you were launching into this of why you can't knit this, and I was really curious to see when, <laughs> when are the times you can. When they're asleep and you're not bothering me. <laughs> <laughs> I 
should be, I'm the one, you know, look at me. Look at my dishcloth. So I will be on the Madeira's Lace by next week, if not done with the Madeira's Lace by next week. Throwing that out there. Um, I have travel coming up in March. I'll be gone. Till April. <laughs> A couple times. I'm going to two trips to Pennsylvania. No, one trip to Pennsylvania. And then in April I go to Maryland. Yes. And then at the end of April I go to Pennsylvania again. So I'll get some knitting in there. We're also doing a PZ knit along in our group, the His and Hers Raveler group, which is a community group. All are welcome. It's not our group, it's the collective our. Not our. My stomach is making awful noises. Uh, Nobody can hear it. I can. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> so I started my PZ. It's pitiful. Um, I'm going to put some more work it into pitiful? it because I haven't gotten very far. The beginning. What is it supposed to be? It's a sweater. Oh, well, that's pretty. It's <laughs> pretty pathetic. I thought you said it was a shawl. I'm like, that's not bad. It's bigger than your washcloth. This is true. So the way that you do it, it is One a cloth. it is a paid pattern, so I can't give you the exact instructions, but it is in pieces, and then you cable cast on for the fronts, and that's lace. So this isn't something that was portable. I did bring it to work. One day, maybe can't remember. I've been taking the shipwreck to work and working on that on my lunch. Um, so I'm on the third row of the lace panel. The first repeat. So I need to spend more time on this. But I love the color. This is Valley Yarns. It's a little long, right? Yeah. Like you knit it with other people. Yeah. yeah. Right. Nobody else is like crazy far yet. Northfield, which is a 70% merino, 20% baby alpaca, and 10% silk. And it's in the color Sea Spray. And I think I'm using a six. Stomach. Gosh, what is going on? It's called digestion. I guess so. Um, and that is in my Erin Lane sweater bag. Pretty soon my um, holo, ho, ho Aloha will have to go into my other Erin Lane sweater bag because it's getting too big. You guys, if you guys are all like doing it together and you're like ravenous about it, are you all ho alohos? <laughs> no? Uh, ho alohos? No. Like a ho ho. No. I miss ho hos. <laughs> Actually, they were never really my favorite. No. Um, and then what I still have yet to start is the knitted knockers. My yarn's still sitting here. So. I had to kill people for that year. <laughs> that, that will have to, to get on there soon. I have been cross-stitching, which I did quite a bit over the weekend. Um, I wound all of the bobbins for myself and for my mom. We're doing the frosted pumpkin. Every time we say that now, people get hungry. Because <laughs> you said it sounded like it tasted good. It does. Good. Um, it's the frosted pumpkin stitchery. And in our show notes for last week and the week before, you can find the link to purchase the pattern. It's $16. Um, and then it was about $40 for two sets of cloth, all of the colors. Cases for the bobbins, bobbin winder. And then another $10 because I got a square frame. They're made out of PVC. Is that exciting? It is exciting. As opposed to the circular ones? Yes, because this fits in my hands better. Ah. Um, and I am this far. Um, this is the January square, and this will be March. Um, February goes over here, so as soon as I'm done framing out March, I'm going to go into February, and then I'm going to actually start January. So I'm excited. Um, we purchased the mushroom color fabric, and it is um, basically linen, and it's the first time I've used linen, and I was a little nervous at first because, I don't know if you can see, it's very dense, and it's not like the cross-stitch fabric that I've used before. So I'm finding that I do it better if it's daytime, and I position myself by the window by natural light. I do have an ot light, but even at night, for me, it's hard, even with my glasses on. She's a day cross-stitch. She's a day stitcher. <laughs> I'm a day stitcher. Because I'm getting old, apparently, and I can't see. Um, 
I think it was Friday night. I was getting very frustrated because you were I couldn't angry. see. I couldn't see at all. But I, I was, was like, just what did I do? I, I was just starting, I can't so I didn't see really. This. I didn't really know. And I was like playing games or something, and you sat down on the couch next to me, and you had like sharp objects. There, it's a dull needle. So I wouldn't stop you before. See, it doesn't hurt. I was terrified. <laughs> It doesn't take much. I had to like pause the game and make sure I was going to be okay. That's the back! Came out really good. Look at the back! I know. I'm so proud of it. What do you think, MJ? So I'm having fun. I'm excited to start the animals. I think that will be more fun. What, then squares? I would hope so. I'm having fun with it. Okay. And this is going to be really good for on the plane and the train and the automobiles for when I'm traveling. I'm going to bring this, a sock, and a sweater. How about with a goat? How about in a boat? How about in a plane? How I'm spinning. Train? You are. Yeah. Oh, I took it off. It didn't wind all the way on. Um, I took out some really deep stash. This is from when I was in the funky, the funky Carolina Club, which doesn't even exist anymore. And this is Shetland. You know, the cat is being a terrorist. And this is the color, and it's like a oatmeal, dark gray, aqua, light blue, grass green. Reminded me of spring, and I've had it for at least four years, so <laughs> it was time to spin it. Um, it came in a braid, I divided the braid in half, and then each half I divided into thirds. Um, this is the last third of the first two ounces. This is the second third, and I've pre-drafted this. So you can see that the colors are a little bit more muted because mm -hmm. it's been pre-drafted, so I can just zip right through it. Um, this is the first third of the first two ounces. So it's very light, and it will be a two-ply, and it will eventually become maybe a cowl or a infinity scarf cowl type thing. How do you thing? decide that it's a two-ply? Um, that's a great question. Are you just, because sometimes you're like, I Navajo plied the shit out of that. <laughs> and then you're, um, then I'm like, <laughs> and then this time you're like, I had two-ply, I'm gonna, that's gonna be a two-ply. And I'm like, why not the Navajo? Like, um, I could Navajo ply it. It would make the, um, colors be more together once it's knit up. Because when, it's you, just like, when you Navajo ply something, you take a length of fiber and you double it, you triple it back on itself. Uh, it's chain plying. It's kind of like crocheting in that you're making a loop and pulling the fiber through that loop. When you two ply something, you spin them all separately on two bobbins, and then you take them from those two bobbins and spin into a Z instead of an S. So you're spinning backwards and plying them together. It's not necessarily faster. No. Does it make it come out? No, I do them. Weight? Nope. Lighter. Nope. Just um, different. I want the colors to fall the way exactly. that a two ply will. So they'll be more barber pulling, which means like you know the barber yeah, pull yeah. at the barber shop, where the colors twist around. I'm not being condescending. No, I appreciate. <laughs> no problem. See that, guys. <laughs> so I decided because of how the colors looked when I pulled the braid apart, I wanted it to be that. It's not pastel. I feel like it's a lighter shade because I don't feel like these are pastel colors at all, in my opinion. Have you ever done something you regretted and wish you went back and plied it differently? I don't think that I regretted it, but on my Keegan Lane, I kind of wished I had Navajo plied it. I like how springy it is. It's very lofty in the two ply, but I wish I had Navajo plied it so that when I knit it, the colors would have cooled more. Mm -hmm. When you have a two-ply, sometimes, if you don't line the colors up, if they do have more barber pulling, when you knit it up, it will be more muddled. Mm. And in this case, that's what I want. Because I want the cowl to kind of look like the airy scarves everybody's wearing, like that $40 yeah, one I yeah. from the Cape. I want it to look more airy and to complement an outfit rather than being the showpiece of whatever I'm wearing. Cool. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't always decide before I start spinning. Okay. Sometimes I'll be spinning. When do you have to make the call? Um, I, in my opinion, um, because I am not an expert, I've been spinning for when, five when years. When did you make the call? I've been spinning for five years, and for me, I usually make the call before I start spinning. Mm -hmm. Like, I have a plan usually, 
I can't remember the last time I didn't have a plan. <laughs> um, but I think if I were spinning, I would need to make the call within the first ounce. Because I, I feel it like determines I'm very... how you spin it? Yes, for me. Yeah. Yeah. For me. Um, but sometimes, like you'll start off fiber optic, for example, for her gradients. Sometimes I'll start off thinking that it's I want to make it, you know, a heavier weight yarn. It'll still be Navajo ply because in my opinion, if you're going to spend the money on a gradient, I personally choose to Navajo ply it yeah. because that's what you're paying so much money for to keep the colors together. Yeah. That's just my opinion. Nobody else has to have that opinion. Um, but every time I think I want it to be a heavier weight, I can get that fiber to spin like frog's hair thin, so yeah. thin that I feel like that's what the fiber wants to become. You just kind of have to go with it. Where did frog's hair come from? It's so thin. Like, is that yours or from right now? No. Or is that like That's just the thing. Yep. Frog's hair. <laughs> like so thin. It's a great name for a band. The frog's hair? Frog's hair. Or a bar? Frog's hair. Yeah. Hair of the frog. Or a colorway. <laughs> Don't you dare take it, Heather. It's <laughs> mine. <laughs> Whenever I get around to dying. <laughs> we'll hear the frog for you. So anyway, that's going to be a two-ply, and it's going to end up being probably... Well, thanks, because I've always wondered. Well, you can ask. Oh, it's better to ask here, because someone else you may can... be wondering. That's or true. maybe another dude, like, what the Another way to see what about? your finished yarn will look like before it's been washed, can you hold this, is to take a little I'll bit of your... I'll hold your bobbins any day of the week. <laughs> that's so wrong. Um, don't pull too hard, please. I'm not pulling. Um... Hard is to pull a, a length of your spun single off and then let it double back over on itself and that can be oh, yeah, yeah. what your finish yarn might look like. It hasn't been, um, you know, plied at all. There's no spin to it, but just that way you can see yeah. what the thickness might be. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. That's that. And that's in my Jessalu bucket bag. <laughs> my Starry Night. Starry night. It's not a sickness, it's a commitment. <laughs> That's determination. What am I? I'm a Jessa. A Jessa Hope. A Jessa Hope. Mine. And um, this is my zip up version of the same thing. <laughs> Some of these are gifts, I didn't buy them all. Um, I did get one thing in the mail since we last recorded. Speaking of buying stuff, this is my one club package. Your only it is one. no longer a double dose. I didn't make you made you that didn't. call. I did. This is my Into the World shipment. This is the February shipment, so if you have yet to receive yours, you may want to look away if you want to be surprised. If you don't, keep watching. It's good that you did that because, we, you know, I'd rather not have to give a child away because we're running out of space. <laughs> <laughs> so it this just is doesn't the... reflect well on the rest of us. Where'd Matt go? I had to put fiber in his bed. Um, so this is the Into the World Lux shipment. I now get Lux fiber. I don't get the yarn anymore, and I severely regret it already. Um, and it's the Merino Silk. It's 80-20. And it's 4 to 4.3 ounces. I didn't weigh it yet. And it's called Take It to the Bridge. And the colorway inspiration is Monet. Water lilies. Or Bridge of Flowers. Bridge of Flowers. And... It is so pretty. Should we, should we take it to the mattresses? Yeah. And you can see the bits of silk in it. Oh, yeah. Right there. And it is so pretty. And I don't know. Oh. I don't know what it's going to become. Cat. I have no... No. I don't... I have no idea. But I think I want a novel apply it. Because the color pops are so pretty. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at the staple on that, you guys. Oh my god. Oh, it smells so good. Never wanted to be a bag of roving more <laughs> in my life. Um. So we were terrorized this evening. Mm. We're potty training. And for the last few days we've tried to record and we have a little one who would rather have a temper tantrum 
than um, poop on command. I don't really know how else. We're trying to get her to go on the potty. We'll spare you the details, but... Yeah, we don't need to talk about crap. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's called The Bathroom Terrorist. Uh, we... We think it's episode 32, but we're not sure. We're not sure. Um, we're lucky we're recording, so if this is a little too helter-skelter for you, feel free to turn us off. Feelings won't be hurt. I'm glad that you put up with us this far. For the PZ, we do have a tag. If you want to knit along, you can tag your project. It's HH for his and hers. PZ, and then the word please, so it's like... Is that How do you spell PZ? P-E-A-S-Y. And then please, because it's like, bitch, please, but it's PZ. <laughs> came up with that all on my own. Um, I have some thank yous. It was my birthday on the 4th of February. I'm old. And um, I have some thank yous um, and a random act of pattern thank you. So thank you to Sheila D37, Dramatic Knit Steve, Fiber Nymph Lisa, Annette K18, Aunt Susan, hey Susan, uh, Lisa Yen for Yarn, hi Lisa, and Lemon Half, hey back. <laughs> and Tara Lynn 1104 and same old knit. I think that's everybody. So thank you very much for the patterns. I need to quit my job and just knit because the patterns that they sent me are gorgeous. Gorgeous. So thank you. Um, I also wanted to say thank you for the Valentines that you sent me on Ravelry. I don't know if you got any because you haven't logged in. We'll have to log in and see. You I'll probably have some hot chicks in there giving me messages and I don't even pay attention. Whatever. Um, <laughs> we have three day oh, donations. Whatever. I'm walking the Susan G. Komen three day. It's 60 miles in three days. This will be my second time. I'm a team of one. <laughs> and that's okay. With um, a support team of one. Where are you guys? <laughs> we'll see if people can make it down. Even if they can come down for just one day or one afternoon so I can see them, it would... Oh, it would be amazing. Please come. If you can't it's come... It's me and Stanley. Stanley is Sean's Stanley's car. getting decorated. Um, if you can donate, I really appreciate it. Um, it is tax deductible for next tax season. And my page is right here at the bottom. There it is. Wow. That was kind of weird. I don't know. Um, and then I would like to say thank you to Amanda B., Megan H., Kathy J., and just end for your donations. Um, my aunt also gave me a $50 check for my birthday for the walk. Yay. So I need to put that in. Um, I prefer donations right to the site so I don't have to do that, but she didn't want to do it online. So I'm happy to help her out because she helps me out by donating. Um, so I think I'm just under or just over 700 once I put that in. And I have to have 2300 so if you have a podcast and you're watching, if you don't mind mentioning the walk and the website, um, I appreciate it. We are also still working with Wee Sparrow on her Acme webpage, which is listed right here. And those are um, Knitters for Knockers project bags. And I believe a, a good chunk of that comes to us in a quarterly donation. She puts it to the side and donates all in one chunk. So your name won't be affiliated with that donation, but because you have that bag, we know that you have donated, so thank you. Um, if you already have a bag and you want to tweet or plurk or Facebook uh, the link for other knitters and friends uh, to purchase bags, we appreciate that as well. We're happy to have a family-owned business making a small profit and them then donating to us yeah. as well. Their profit's less than a dollar on each bag. They're giving us quite a bit of it, so thank you very much, Wee Sparrow. Um, Food? Oh my gosh, I totally forgot. So what's on your plate? Uh, this week we made portobello mushroom oh. pizzas. Now, I know what you're thinking, pizza, you're not supposed to eat pizza, it's full of carbs, it's full of sugar, like totally bad for you. So I was on Pinterest and there was a picture of portobello mushroom caps, so the whole large mushroom cap, that was then covered in organic sauce, so that meant that there wasn't any high fructose corn syrup, preservatives, um, no added stuff. It was just organic tomatoes, not even sugar, peppers, onions, basil, 
and that was it. And then they added cheese and I think they put peppers or something on theirs. Well, I clicked the link and it brought me over to a health website, but there was no recipe at all. So I just said, well, this seems pretty easy. They've got mushrooms, and I know from grilling mushrooms that you need to take the stem part out. Um, I bought some Newman's own... It had a really funny name. It was like... It had the word sure. sock in it, like sock it to me or something. I had to get it out of the refrigerator and take a picture because it was funny. And I got that. It was organic. And then I got whole milk mozzarella cheese. Whole milk isn't bad for you, just so you know. Fat is also not bad for you, but sugar and carbs are if you have bodies like ours. So we went with portobello mushrooms, the sauce, cheese, and then I added on pepperoni. And we put it in the oven at 350 for 20 minutes and that was a little bit too long because some of the mushrooms started yeah. to like let go of the cheese. <laughs> 350 for like 15 minutes yeah. probably would have been good. Take it out and make sure everything's melted. And, Two of them yeah. kind of started to, they but were the rest of them awesome. were fine. Um, and we paired that with a mixed green salad that had rolled up peppered turkey, ham, and cheese. Yeah, it was a, it was a little mini chef salad. And egg hard-boiled egg, and then we got the best new dressing from Trader Joe's. Yeah. It's their it was Parmesan a par it was a light ranch. Parmesan ranch. And it's, it has less carbs, sugar, and even fat, which I don't normally count. And it pours out like a vinaigrette because yeah, it's, it's so, so thin, thin, which is key. And it's better for you than just like regular old Italian yeah, dressing. It, was it, it had less bad things in it. It was so. very tasty. And so, yeah, it's the picture will be at the beginning and the end of the episode if you want to check it out, and we'll have the recipe right down there. It's, it's great exactly what I said. If you if you really like English muffin pizzas, which I do, this is a great substitute. So how many pounds have you lost? Twenty-two as of this morning. Congratulations. How about you? Eighteen. Yay. How many times did you go to the gym? I have not been to the gym yet. Me neither. <laughs> and so. or running or anything like that. Yeah. So probably should at I, least do something. As soon as eventually. the weather changes, I'll probably just start getting up earlier, which I'm not looking forward to. But. <laughs> It'll also be nice in the evenings because it gets dark around six now, so it makes it hard to like go for a run. Yeah. But, but it's nice to know that you can do that much without really doing much, except for cooking differently and eating differently. Yeah. So. My friend Wendy went to a nutritionist this week, and she, I think, was surprised to find out that sweet and low isn't going to work for her. Yeah. Like, if she's going to put a sweetener in her coffee, it needs to be a little bit of sugar. If she's going to eat cheese, it shouldn't be low fat. It should be normal, non-processed cheese. Less of it. Well, not even less of it. Like, yeah, you can eat as much as you want. That's the thing. An another friend was talking about portion control. It's my cousin. She's talking about portion control and how she's so hungry. She's trying to lose the big way. I was like, if you're hungry, you're doing it wrong. You need mm. to eat. Put carrots in your bag. You know, put some almonds or cashews or a hard-boiled egg. Like, if you're hungry, you need to eat. You yeah. need to eat. <laughs> Don't starve yourself. Your body goes into starvation mode and closes down. So... I lost a pound yesterday after weighing myself for the week. So I had lost yeah, I blew, 17 I blew, and now I, blew I lost right 18. through 20 pounds. I didn't even see that. So. Well, the next time I weigh in, I will be in Wonderland. Uh, Do you know what that is? Yes. It means I'll be under 200 pounds. I'm pretty excited. It's been a long time since I've been under 200 pounds. So, hooray! I don't think I have anything else. And if I do, I'll have to see wait for next week. For next week. Not that far away. We're a little late this week. We are, so. but we were being parents. And, and that sometimes takes me precedence. With my work. We needed some video. Yes. Stuff, so. I did a, a movie for Sean's work, and that took a couple days. So we have a Ravelry group. It's a community group, and everyone is welcome. Uh, we have over 600 members. Wow. So thank you for joining us. Uh, the knit-alongs have kind of exploded. Everybody's chatting and helping cool. each other, and it's so cool to watch and be a part of. 
and we have a Facebook group. We also have a Twitter for the His and Hers podcast, and that's really just to announce that we've made a new episode. Um, I'm Melia Bella on Ravelry. I'm also on Plurk, Twitter, Instagram is where I spend most of my social time online. Plurk, I'm only on there a couple times a day, maybe, sometimes just once a day to say good morning, just because work is crazy right now. Um, I think that's it for my social media. And I'm Viper989 on PlayStation Network. And 413 on... Viper413. Viper413 on... Instagram. Instagram. Underscore 413 on Twitter and Ravelry. So we will see you next week at some point. Um, I think it will be towards the end of the week. So... Thanks for stopping